Hi again, everyone. Um, now I'm going to ruin it by not doing a deeply technical session, but please forgive me for that. So I just wanted to uh, end today by uh, building on what you've heard so far. You've heard a lot around the how MariaDB and the what elements, etc. So I just want to finish by talking about why. Why would you consider MariaDB and why would you consider it now? So to begin with, if we look at the why MariaDB, and uh, this is a out of a Gartner report uh, back into it, 2018. But basically, they were predicting that by next year, more than 70% of new in-house applications will be developed on an open source database, and that 50% of all existing commercial RDBMS instances will have been converted or in the process of being moved to an open source. So it's quite a big statement in terms of where the market's going, in terms of the desire and the urge to have an open source solution to move away from proprietary and uh, locked-in solutions. If we dig down a bit deeper into that and look at this chart, I mean, there's three main trends around open source, uh, why people are doing it. Reduced cost, obviously. Um, obviously, that's endemic in everything we do in the IT industry, but particularly open source is one key topic that people consider in terms of when they want to reduce cost. Uh, exploiting new technology, um, being able to see what new technology is coming out, what new best practices are coming out, how to adopt them and exploit them quickly, uh, which can be very difficult with proprietary uh, vendor solutions. And perhaps newer on that list is how to use data to add value. Uh, we know the well-worn cliche of data being the lifeblood of your business, but it's very true, always has been, and it's increasingly so. So organizations want to look at how they actually get more out of data, how that can actually drive their business. Uh, saving costs. By open source optician, like I said, everybody wants to do that. Um, you know, there's key element, key ways of doing that: moving to open source and not having license costs, but also eliminating that dependence on uh, proprietary vendors being locked into solutions year after year, with very expensive uh, license costs, and in some cases, mainframe world being a particular example, very complicated uh, licensing models that nobody really understands, including IBM themselves, I suspect. But also using that to be able to, you know, really exploit new technology. And that also leads into resilience. You always need to have that um, resilience still built into your organization, particularly at the enterprise level, and looking at cloud adoption. Now you actually make cloud work for you, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. And like I said, on the data side, in terms of how you utilize data, um, how you actually get hold of that, how you make the most of it, how you understand what data you've got, uh, which is, in some cases, not always clear, and then what you can do with that data to get value out of it. And you want technology that actually enables you to do that quickly and easily and simply. If we look at the chart at the bottom of there, it's quite interesting in terms of expanding on that move towards open source. And again, this is data that's been gathered from a mixture of Gartner and IDC and Forrester. So it's all industry available data. It's not something that we're making up. Uh, but they were predicting that, again, by next year, the growth of HTAP, and if you're not familiar with HTAP, it means hybrid, transactional, and analytical processing. We've talked about MariaDB today and storage engines, et cetera. What it means is that uh, essentially you can have a hybrid uh, database platform. So you can have transactional and analytical processing happening at the same time, but you're only looking at one language, SQL. You don't have to have a mixture of different languages. Typically, if you look at many environments, there's this um, silos of transactional processing, of analytical processing, and that could be subdivided into columnar and document and graphical, et cetera. And it's a real pain for an organization. You have multiple different databases, uh, data siloed, so you have to move it from one to the other. You have to have different skill sets, um, employees with different skill sets and training, et cetera, and it can be very expensive and uh, not easy to manage. With a hybrid solution like we have, then it's all in one place. It's a single platform. You use the storage engines at the back end to decide what data is processed and how and you're using standard SQL. But 30% of the market is moving towards that hybrid model in terms of they want to simplify what they do. 50% of organizations will have converted their RDBMSs to open source. 60% of workloads will be deployed on open source. And 70% of all new applications will be automatically put to an open source database rather than onto a proprietary database. And the last box, I think, is also quite interesting, 75% of organizations will still be using SQL. As I was just saying, we've seen the rise of multiple different databases. We've seen a lot of interest in NoSQL some years back and the drive to, to those types of databases, plus other ones, which is all very well, but it doesn't mean that you've got those multiple different languages. 
And organizations have invested a lot of money in training up people and understanding what they do, building schemas or built around SQL. And it'd be much easier for them to be able to just do everything through that. And that's what we offer with MariaDB, a very core element of what we do. The key thing about open source is that where you require it, it's enterprise grade. So you're not compromising on the resilience and the availability that you require in your organization, but it's wallet friendly in terms of lowering your TCO considerably. So you're not having to have uh, licensing models, you have just have annual subscriptions, being able to utilize modern hardware as and when you require, and also be able to evolve your price model accordingly and use things like cloud where you, where you, where you need to as well. And we've talked about organizations moving their data to open source, um, which is great. But obviously, when you're moving your data that's been sitting on a proprietary database for many, many years, and then you're moving that across to open source, there is a lot of anxiety that can be involved in that in terms of if you're going to do that, what does it mean for you? Is it going to be reliable? Will it actually work? But driving that, you know, the economics of inevitable change. If you look at the right side of this slide, here's an example. And again, this is from Gartner. This is an example, uh, widely available uh, out there on the internet. Um, don't have to take our word for it. But just shows you the difference between and um, picking on Oracle, um, between an Oracle um, deployment and a MariaDB deployment. As you can see, the cost over three years is pretty significant, to say the least. I.e., Oracle costs 33 times more. So this is one of the main drivers behind why people are looking to migrate from proprietary, uh, i.e. Oracle, to an open source database. And typically, MariaDB is where they come for that. And there's a good reason for that. It's because over the years, we've built up quite a lot of expertise around migration uh, and developed our own migration methodology, um, particularly around the Oracle um, market, because people really do want to move across, but they want to manage the risk involved in that. So they want to move away from that proprietary lock-in, not be tied in. And cost is important, but there's also other factors, like being tied into that vendor, not be able to adopt new technology, which can then have an impact on the business. And it can be very slow to move with a proprietary vendor. So people want to migrate, but they want it to be successful. And like I said, we've developed a methodology that uh, we can work with you to help you actually make that successful. And that's proven with customers that we got, like DBS, Development Bank of Singapore, for example, who are running, now running around 96% plus of their business on MariaDB, having moved it across from Oracle. And the reason behind this is because, as you've learned today, of the MariaDB platform architecture. Everything is integrated through our flexible architecture. You can start with just a single instance running a transactional database. But then when you want to move up to, for example, adding different levels of resilience, whether it's replicated, whether it's fully clustered, or with Expand now fully distributed, you can do easily, transparently, very simply. If you want to start involving analytics, again, that's just simply turning on the other storage engine and working accordingly. And Max Scale sitting there doing a lot of the intelligence around this. So it gives you something that you can start and build up transparently and easily, not something where you have to do forklift moves or expensive and complicated um, migrations. And MariaDB is very much about innovation. We always have been and we always will be, but we're very much committed that that innovation is enterprise grade, so you don't have to make any compromises, that it's exciting, it's cost effective, and it's all built on open source. So that's what we're all about in terms of what we do when we drive innovation. Okay, why MariaDB, but why now? What's the driving factors at the moment? There's a number of driving factors in the industry, and again, pretty common, digital transformation, um, something that people have been talking a lot about now for a few years, but it's with us for good. It's never going to change. We're always going to be transforming. New technology is always going to be coming along, whether that's to drive down cost or add new functionality or whatever. So it's something we're living with, and we have to be able to manage and build into what we do. Other thing driving demand for open source, how proprietary solution vendors are behaving in the face of the change and the demand for change. Cost, obviously, always with us. Cloud, what can that do for us? And the need for flexibility and how to deal with uncertainty. And I'm just going to briefly talk about each of these for the next few minutes. If you look at digital transformation in the changing world, I mean, we all want to embrace new technologies and deploy them at will. When something comes along that we look at and think, yeah, that's good, that can really help my environment, or that can make a big difference to my uh, competitive base or uh, business advantage, whatever it happens to be. Uh, we can adopt new, diverse, scalable technology. We, it's not just a case of scaling up these days. We need to scale out and also scale back uh, in terms of managing cost. It's all very well going in one direction, but there's a cost involved with that. You know, how do you manage that cost by being able to come back as well? 
and deploy quickly where needed and cost effectively and using innovation, as we said before, but maintaining your enterprise capability all the way through that. And obviously, data analytics is a big factor in today's uh, industry and what we do with it, but also how we exploit cloud as well, uh, which is quite a key factor in terms of what most organizations are looking at to do. And a brief word on the industry response or the lack of, like I said, topology vendors behavior in the face of change has been probably typical. I little or no attempt to really change. Um, it's all about protecting revenue at all costs. Um, they make a lot of money from their license costs and they want to protect that, which is understandable, but it's also very annoying when you're out there trying to build a business and save money. And typically they pay lip service to market expectations and do very little in terms of adding new innovation or technology, or certainly not very quickly. Costs are always rising, we know that. On-premise is becoming quite prohibitive in many cases, um, depending on where you're based, whether it's country or part of that country. Uh, maintaining data centers can be very, very expensive, and that's only going to go up uh, in terms of energy costs, etc. So everybody needs control of you know, their TCOs, not just the promise, but how you actually deliver on that. And some of you may remember the promise of utility pricing models many years ago, where IT will be just like energy, just like electricity. You could plug in, use what you want at the cost that you need. Never quite arrived, but cloud offers some hope in that area. And it's not always what delivers what it promises, um, but it gives us, it takes us a long way towards being able to have that always on, on tap type of uh, IT model. So looking at cloud, as I just said, we want to take advantage of the promised advantages that cloud delivers or should deliver, and we want to lower operating costs improve our resource management and operating capabilities, et cetera. You know, create a very agile, fluid, and easy to manage IT infrastructure. And that's what I think everybody hoped the cloud would deliver. As we all know by now, it doesn't quite deliver on that necessarily. Uh, cloud's here, it can offer a lot, but it also has to be carefully utilized and managed. Sometimes you can deploy cloud and find out you're actually paying more, but there may be other advantages behind that around the operational side that compensate for that. So we want cloud services to actually deliver on promises and actually delivers what you want, when you want, and how you want. And key to that, obviously, is flexibility. Be able to rapidly respond to shifting markets and evolving demands on our business. Be able to have scalability in any direction. And also adopt and deploy new practices quickly and with ease. So how do we take that new technology, that new practice that I've seen mentioned uh, when I was reading up last night, and how do I bring that into my business? But how do I do it now rather than in three years' time? And finally, when we look at uncertainty, you know, dealing with the unexpected. I mean, there's always been uncertainty in the marketplace. Any of you who were around in IT in the industry 20 years ago will remember the uh, Y2K uh, debacle. Uh, back in 1999, there was lots of companies, consultancies, software companies, making an awful lot of money predicting how the, the world was going to end at uh, midnight on New Year's Eve 1999. Planes were going to fall out of the sky. Energy grids were going to go down. Um, telecommunication networks were just going to stop dead when it got to uh, midnight. Uh, of course, we got there and nothing really happened. And we lived through it quite easily in the end. However, within a year or two, we had the dot, uh, the dot boom crash, which caught everybody by surprise to a large degree. And a lot of businesses went out of business. A lot of companies folded and uh, there was quite a big shock, both economically and from a technical and business point of view and lifestyle point of view. So. You can never fully prepare for an unexpected event. Um, COVID-19 being a typical example. Nobody predicted that, and year, over a year later, we're still living through it, let alone um, be looking ahead to the future. And if you look at COVID-19 as a typical example, it's caused mass disruption in the labor force. It's decimated some industries. Okay, some industries have done very well out of it. Good luck to them. And uh, it's certainly increased the surge in digital connectivity, whether that's working from home, how businesses operate, or looking at cloud as a more attractive option. And quite perhaps also just as important, it's also reevaluated how we look at risk in terms of companies, how they evaluate that, and now they're bit, probably more risk averse in terms of what to expect in the future. So you can't always predict what's going to happen. You can predict uncertainty. But what you can do is actually prepare for change. So you can start laying the groundwork for what may happen in the future and how you actually deal with that. And with MariaDB, we think we've got a very elegant and a very comprehensive solution to how you deal and prepare for change in terms of the database side, at least. So MariaDB as your central database, being able to handle any type of processing, any type of scalability, deliver performance and fault tolerance, et cetera. And it doesn't matter what that industry is, whether you're in fintech delivering solutions, whether you've got an IT platform that you're trying to deliver on a global scale, 
whether you've got software as a service solutions that you're building and deploying, or whether you're in e-commerce or just a traditional bank. You can do all what you need from a database point of view on the MariaDB. The point being that uh, build your business on a database that has actually been built for a new generation, not something we're trying to shoehorn new things into as they come along, but something that's actually built from the ground up to be flexible and uh, deliver on performance, scalability, performance, etc., money, economics, etc., everything you need to drive that business. What does that mean for data processing in general? Well, like I said, we've seen that uh, the market's moving to increased digital computing. But for that, you want controllable performance. You want even more resilience and increased security. We know the cyber threat that affects every industry at the moment. So you always have to keep an eye on that. And you want full plane scalability in terms of being able to scale to meet whatever comes along. But you also need more diversity in how you manage the data that you have, whether that's flexible on-premise cloud capabilities, uh, large organizations tend to have on-premise and cloud, and in some cases, different cloud providers. So they need to be able to, with their data, manage that across multiple environments. And with MariaDB, you can do that. You can consolidate multiple data types. And as I said, with the MariaDB architecture, you've got transactional, analytical, document, column type processing. You can do it all within MariaDB. And perhaps just as important, you can be flexible and adapt to rapid change management in terms of as the economy or your requirements change, be able to move to adapt to that. And finally, and not forgetting cost management, improved cost management, giving you more control over multiple varied cost sources, i.e., as I said just now, where you've got a mixture of on-premise or cloud or virtual uh, microservice type environment, where you manage all that, and really you can very easily, but also the commercial foundation underneath that. And with MariaDB being open source, being new, and being an agile company, we can adapt very quickly to new commercial models in terms of we've got our traditional model, traditionally priced. We have our Sky SQL, priced as a cloud, but different models in between as well in terms of suiting environments. And it's an area where we can be very rapid in understanding what you require and how the solution should be pitched towards that and what the price of that should be and how you pay for it as well. And I just want to finish in summary by saying, finally, why MariaDB again? Well, we think there's several, or to be precise, eight sort of important factors you know, to consider MariaDB and why we think that uh, you know, we deliver a particularly good answer. And that's around innovation, scalability, controllable performance, resilience and security, diverse data management, cloud, cost, and new commercial models, all of which I've covered. And I'm not going to go through all this in detail. But you know, with innovation, you know, we believe that our architecture really suits um, the market and the way the market's growing and what people require from that market. Scalability, we present a lot of work on making sure that, that delivers on what uh, an organization or you as a customer may actually want. And underpinning that is things like controllable performance, resilience and security, and diverse data management, you know, giving you a single platform that can do everything you want. And also being able to adapt and exploit the cloud to deliver on that but not forgetting costs and commercials. And it's very easy to come up with new solutions that uh, are very expensive and rather rigid cost models, and we move away from that in terms of what we can do. Now, you've heard what we can do and how we can do it, and I finished by summary on why, but um, obviously we don't expect you to take our word for it. So more than happy if any of you want to ask more questions or if you want to have a discussion around this, to have a one-on-one -on -one in terms of sitting down for an informal chat and talking about why we think MariaDB is great, or why it could be a good fit for your environment. But for now, I shall hand back to Jürgen. 